So if you've been following my channel, you know that I talk a lot about manufactured homes quite a bit. Unfortunately, when it comes to manufactured homes, it seems that there's the lack of information that works against you when you're purchasing one. I get loads of letters from people that say that they have purchased a manufactured home from a manufactured home dealer and they have horror stories and they're asking for my help. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some things that you can do if you are purchasing a manufactured home from a manufactured home lot and you're putting it on a piece of property. Now when you're buying brand new like these ones back here, they won't let me film here so I'm doing this in secret. No matter how nice the salesperson is, ask to see everything they have on the lot. Not only that, make sure you research all the manufactured home companies that they have on this specific lot. One of the best ways to find out about those specific companies they do have on the lot is to go ahead and check with Consumer Affairs and the Better Business Bureau. Another great way to find out about specific companies is to go on Twitter and look at the at symbol and the manufacturer company name. If you find a lot of people complaining online, which is great reference to you, kind of read their stories and see what they have said and see how the manufactured home company responded to them, if they even responded at all. If you do look on the Consumer Affairs website and the Better Business Bureau, it always seems that a lot of manufactured home companies that do respond, they end up doing some kind of canned response asking them to call their 1-800 number. They kind of don't let it all hang out online. And that can be a red flag if they're unwilling to express exactly what's going on and address the problem publicly online. Now, most manufactured home complaints when it comes to buying a brand new one fresh off the lot, and it comes to the location is the people that actually install it themselves. So they, most cases, they hire a third party company to take over the installation of the manufactured home. The, somebody will come out and deliver the manufactured home. And once the builders have put it together, then there becomes a problem because it wasn't put together correctly. Whether it's the plumbing issues that go out to the well or the seam isn't correct, there's all sorts of things that can happen. And over time you start noticing these things because things aren't level and start things start breaking around your manufactured home and you think it's because of the manufactured home but it's not it's the people who actually installed it this is probably the most critical thing you can do when you're buying a manufactured home is to investigate the people that are actually putting it in place ask for your reviews of the people that have done this in the past ask other customers that have had reviews with this company and ask the people that work at that location how long have they been working with the people that install the manufactured home themselves if they say only a few months then that's a red flag but if they say that these people have worked for them for years ask to speak to somebody that has had their house located in a spot if they can't provide you something like that because they say it's personal or private information put a post out on facebook or instagram or even twitter ask anybody if they've had an experience with this specific company putting in manufactured homes. <laughs> Now here's a really great trick if you're looking for a real deal. So when you go to a manufactured home lot, you will see that they will have all the new, best, newest, greatest uh, manufactured homes in the front of the lot. But if you go towards the back, that seems to be their older models. If they're kind of hiding them, ask to see their older models. And most times you'll get a better deal than the one that's brand spanking new with all the bells and whistles because they want to get those older models off their lot so they can move on to their new inventory. Just something to no, if you're on a deal. Now, if you're getting a manufactured home and you're gonna put it in a park, you will have something called a chattel loan. So I understand in some cases, it's just not gonna be possible for you to be able to purchase a piece of land. Now, if you do have to get a chattel loan, that doesn't mean you have to use the mortgage chattel loan company that they have on the lot. Now, you can actually call different lenders. Just do a quick Google search within your area that says chattel loan companies and see what comes up. There's tons of ads on Google. Scroll underneath the ad and find the first few that pop up on the top page and see if they're willing to work with you to get your chattel loan. Another thing to note though is that when you do receive a chattel loan, in most cases you're going to have a higher interest rate than you would on a typical mortgage and that's because it's not attached to land and they have more of a liability. So they are going to be charging you more on your interest rates for a chattel loan than they would on a typical mortgage. That's why I always say if you're going to buy a manufactured home to at least attach it to land 
and so that way it's all connected to one and you can have a 30-year mortgage with a much lower interest rate. Now a lot of times when you go to manufactured home lots they will have the houses that have all the bells and whistles and if you're looking for a deal you may not want all the bells and whistles. Ask them if you can order one that's kind of stripped down and then you could add what you want to it. You may have to wait longer for that specific manufactured home but at least it will have everything that you want and not all the extras that may cost you a little bit more and you don't really need them. Here's a big one that most people don't know. Each manufactured home comes with a manufactured home warranty already included in the manufactured home itself from the company that actually makes them. Now the lots will try to sell you an extra warranty. Make sure you get a full rundown of exactly what this extra warranty costs and what it covers. Because a lot of times the one that they gave you already included with the manufactured home is not the same as the one that they're trying to sell you on on the lot. Don't get don't get hosed is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> so if you get your manufactured home and it's put in place and you have some minor problems, go ahead and contact their warranty office. They're going to give you a phone number and you can uh, make your claims through there. If you feel like that's exhausted and you've tried many, many times, the first place I want you to go to is to your local manufactured home commission. Um, in Louisiana, we have a mobile home Home commission that's here and you can bring your complaint to them and see what they can do about it. Everybody's area is going to have something a little bit different when it comes to manufactured homes. You could try there first and see what can be done. And when you've exhausted all of this, I want you one more place I want you to go to is I want you to, to go ahead and take pictures of all the complaints you have of your manufactured home. I want you to put that up in an email and I want you to send it to all your local news stations. They love a good story like this. And it, although you may not want your personal information exposed in, in this way where all your neighbors know what's going on, it's one of those ways that at least you're gonna get your house in the shape it should be in and they should have taken care of it the first place. It stinks that you have to go this far to get some people to listen to you, but this is just how the world works in some cases. Ah, you have this most beautiful piece of land and you're so excited to put your manufactured home on it. Well, did you check with the county to make sure that it's authorized to have a manufactured home on it? In some counties, including my own, yes, you could put a manufactured home on the piece of property, but you only have a limited amount of time that you can keep it there because they're going to require you to take the manufactured home off and build your own house. Make sure you've checked all those things ahead of time. You're gonna need permits. Don't try to do this without permits. And one more thing that a lot of people don't think about is when your manufactured home is being delivered, has everything been cleared out so it will be easy for the truck to get in? You're going to be looking for low power lines. You're going to be looking for bridges that might not be wide enough to get your manufactured home over it. So address those things prior before you buy your manufactured home and put it on a piece of property. Now you know that I'm one to tell you to go ahead and buy a piece of land to put your manufactured home on. But in some cases, many people are gonna be putting their brand new manufactured home in a manufactured home park. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is investigate it. Several Pasco County families say they're living in unsafe mobile homes and the landlord won't step up to fix the problems. I have found that YouTube is the best place to find like the scoop on some of these uh, manufactured home parks. So check them out, like put their name in, in your local area, in your local news station. And if you find anything about them, definitely take a second guess if that's where you wanna put your manufactured home. The thing about most manufactured home parks is they can change the rules at any time. And they also can change the lot rents at any time. So what you're gonna to want to do is speak to other residents that have lived in that park for a long period of time. Some questions you wanna ask those neighbors in that park is one, how much has your lot rents gone up in the last five years? Two, has the property management company been maintaining the property and have they addressed all the issues that you've had in an expedient amount of time? Three, what do those lot rents cover? Is there a community pool? Is there a golf cart resting area? Is there parking? You wanna find out everything that covers in those rents and make sure that those things are maintained over a period of time. Also, you wanna investigate if that park has been maintaining their property taxes because nothing would be worse as putting your home somewhere and paying their lot rents only to find out the property management company hasn't been paying their property taxes and it's gonna get sold at a sheriff's sale. You're also gonna to wanna to check to make sure that there is no pending litigation against the manufactured 
home park that you're planning on putting your home in and you're wanting to find out if they're licensed all of this is very important because you want to make sure that they're meeting state regulations for maintaining a park all these things i'm telling you about manufactured homes are going to be different for your specific state always make sure you do your due diligence and research ahead of time now a lot of people get confused between the differences between manufactured homes and modular homes because when you walk on a lot of these lots they'll say well that's a modular house and you're thinking well it doesn't look that much different than a manufactured home if you want to know the difference between manufactured and modular homes you're going to want to check this playlist right here my name is christina smallhorn your real estate whisperer and i tell you all this because good real estate information matters